Welcome. My name is Wayne Raz, and I'm the pastor here at Lovely Lane Chapel. We're glad that you've chosen to worship with us this morning. It's good to see everybody on this bright, sunshiny day. Uh, we do have, I know, one out-of-town guest. We have Nicole and what's the group? Soul? Soul Care. Soul Care uh, that uh, are on campus with us this weekend. We're delighted to have you. Uh, and uh, she came from the Atlanta area. So please uh, tell her hello as uh, you exit the chapel today. Um, we uh, had a uh, memorial service for Greg Cook on Friday, and um, it was uh, a very moving and uh, very well attended service. I did post a video of it, uh, so you have a link in your email if you'd like uh, to see that. So let us go to God in prayer. Lord, thank you for this gorgeous day that you've given us the sunshine. Um, warms our hearts and our souls. Uh, the coolness in the air uh, lets us know that we are alive. And Lord, most of all, your presence here with us, your Holy Spirit makes us aware that we are not alone, but Lord, you are with us. Your Spirit dwells within us, and Lord, we ask you to come, Holy Spirit, Fill us that we may experience you in a real and tangible, personal way today. That we will not be able to leave as we entered here, but we will be changed and transformed more into your likeness. And Lord, we come from different places with different joys and concerns on our hearts and minds. And so we take a moment in the silence of our hearts to lift these up to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And Lord, we lift up the family of Greg Cook and ask you to comfort them and to be especially close with them during this time. Lord, we come here as your children, children of God. And so it is with confidence of children of God that we're able to say the prayer that you taught your disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our congregational hymn this morning is number 310, He Lives. Please stand as you are able as we sing together. We'll sing all three verses. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever foes may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me I see loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy black. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives 
affirm our faith with the historic confession, the Apostles' Creed, found on page 881 of your hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born into the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. Before you're seated, would you just turn around and, and uh, say good morning to one another? Good morning, Jamie. We will not pass the offering plates this morning, but they're located in the narthex. If you'd like to leave a gift tithe or offering to support the ministries of Lovely Lane Chapel, please do so as you exit the chapel. Let's go to God in prayer for those gifts, tithes, and offerings. Oh God, we are so blessed by you. You have given us every good thing, and now we have an opportunity to return a portion to you to do your work, to build your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, to support the ministries of Lovely Lane Chapel. Oh Lord, let us give generously and with glad and joyful hearts. Bless and multiply these gifts for your use, that others will know that Jesus Christ lives. You ask us how we know he lives. He lives within our hearts. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Jamie?
you know, there's just something about sacred music in the midst of this beautiful historic chapel that moves your soul. Thank you, Jamie. We started a series called Love Never Ends, and it's about being the body of Christ. Uh, and the, the theme, Love Never Ends, is guides the whole series, but it's manifest in different ways through the texts that we are going to be talking about in 1 Corinthians. And we began last week on the emphasis of giftedness. And, and God shows us that we are gifted for the whole body, for the community. It's not the gift that we're given for ourselves, but we are given a gift to build up the body, to support the community of faith, the family of Christ. And it builds relationships with those not only that we serve, but also who we serve with. And so last week, that focus was on the whole community. We're going to change focus just a little bit. And this week, we're going to focus a little bit more on the individual and individual giftedness. Our scripture comes from 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 through 31. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all made to drink, of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be the weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has anointed in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then deeds, gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. Let us pray. Oh God, speak to us now your word that what I say not, may not be my own, but Lord, your words and your words alone. For what I have to offer means nothing. But Lord, what you have to offer means everything for all eternity. 
So give us the grace to listen, to hear, understand, and obey in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, that's a long passage, but I'm going to focus on, on, on just a couple of concepts. And, and the first concept is that this description of the body is, is not all-encompassing. There are many gifts. These are some gifts that are given to the body. But all of the gifts are given to the body, and the body is one. And Paul's description of the church as a body is one of the most distinctive and significant teachings in the New Testament. Indeed, Paul tells us that he was given a special revelation concerning this mystery, which was hidden for many ages. And that is that God's people, both Jews and Gentiles, are now constituted one body by virtue of Jesus Christ's exaltation. Both the existence and the growth of the church derived from the unity established by Christ through the Holy Spirit. And he emphasizes this in, in verse 13 when he says, we're all baptized of the one spirit. And the emphasis on the word all and it's an allusion to the sacraments and a similar description uh, that the Israelites and the Jews followed. That one of the truths that signified that was sealed by water baptism is the baptism of the Holy Spirit that incorporates into one body of Christ. And baptism replaced circumcision as a sign of being a member into God's covenant. In verse 12, we're told, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of the one Spirit. You know, the interrelatedness of the gifts that Paul lists here is for the building up of the body. If, if one member suffers, we all suffer together. If one member is honored, we are all honored together. We rejoice together. We are part of a whole. And there's not a hierarchy, not one that's more necessary than the other. We're all necessary together because we are one and yes there is still individuality you are the body of Christ and individual members of it in verse 27 individual members meaning you are important you the individual you the person you matter But we know that best when we engage as a whole, that we act as a community and not just lone rangers. That we are the body, and maybe the best way to phrase that as people who grew up where I grew up would understand it, is said, all y'all are the body. All y'all. And the sum of our individual gifts is greater than the parts. But without your part, the body is not whole. Your part, your gift, is not additive. It's not even multiplicative. It's exponential. It's synergistic. It's like the feeding of the 5,000. Remember in John's version, chapter 6, a little boy had five barley loaves and two fish, and he offered them to the disciples, and Jesus blessed them and fed 5,000 men 
not to mention the children and women, which probably meant that 15,000 or more were fed. And after everyone had all they could eat, there was 12 baskets of food left over. You see that little boy's gift that he offered, it mattered. And it had a synergistic, an exponential effect. There's the story of the feeding of the 4,000 in Matthew 15, where the disciples had seven loaves and a few small fish. They offered them to Jesus, and after he blessed and multiplied them, everyone ate until they were full. 4,000 men had eaten, plus women and children again. Individually, sometimes we feel like we're barely noticeable. But together, we can be star attractions because we're members of the body. And when we offer our gifts to the body, it becomes miraculous. Just a small example, if, if Jenny and I and our dog, Mui, walk on the beach individually, we might be barely noticeable. Somebody might say, oh, look at him, or look at her, or look at the dog running around. But when we are on the beach together and we're throwing him frisbees and he's catching them, Guess what? We're a star attraction. And everybody notices because we're working together. Not just individually, but as a body. Offering your gifts to the body has exponential effect. You matter. And your gifts matter. And without them, we are not whole. As I said, I don't believe Paul is giving us an all exhaustive list. But there are a lot of gifts that are offered to the body. I think of our body of Christ here. You know, I, I, I thank less for being the first one here and, and the last one to leave usually to do all that he does to help provide hospitality, to light the candles, to make sure the sound system is on, to turn off the lights and make sure the uh, lights are off and the doors are closed. And, and before him, I, I thank Gordon Davis because he did it for so many years. You know, I, I thank... Patty and others and, and, and a lot of you for, for your encouragement that you offer me. Almost every week, Patty uh, sends me an email to offer me encouragement about the message or the recording if she hasn't been able to be here. You know, I thank Jamie for offering her um, talents and gifts. And what a blessing it is to the body that she offers those to us. I, I thank you for those who greet people, for those who welcome people. I thank so many of you for the helps that you give. I remember when I had my knee surgery, so many of you helped Jenny and me in so many different ways with transportation, with food, with uh, errands with whatever we needed. I think of uh, Patrick and Debbie Duncan who helped us with uh, some transportation needs and, and with Bob and Bonnie uh, and so many of you who sent us food. I thank those of you who provide essential financial 
support and generosity for the ministries of Lovely Lane Chapel. Some of you have provided things that are, that are needed. You now we have a chalice and patten in memory of Gordon and, I'm sorry, RJ. And we have reserve markers in memory of Gordon. I thank those of you who invite and bring others to come to our fellowship. But maybe most important of all, and the greatest gift I believe that we can all offer to the body is our presence. The ministry of our presence. Your presence matters to the body. All of our presence matters to the body. And I'm not trying to guilt anyone uh, uh, who may not be able to be here today. And I realize that not everyone that attends Lovely Lane Chapel lives here on St. Simon's Island. So it's not a guilt trip. But I will tell you that I firmly believe that the ministry of presence that we give to one another is one of the greatest gifts that you can offer to the body. Because when you're here, when you're present, we are all better and the body is built up. Individual gifts have an exponential effect on the body. You matter. And if your gift is not offered, then the body will be diminished. And not just by subtraction, but it will be diminished exponentially. As Paul says in verse 14, indeed the body does not consist of one member, but of many. Hear this. If you hear only one thing today, you have been gifted by God. Discover your gift. Use it to build up the body. And God will multiply our gifts exponentially. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice with it. Thanks be to God. So as we leave here, my prayer is that we will all offer the gifts that God has given to us. Offer them to the body so that God may use them and knit them together and put them together and it has an exponential effect on the world because you matter. You are important. And your gift offered to God is priceless. So go. Use your gifts. Honor God and share the love of Jesus Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
my wife and listen to you. 